I was in a meeting with a group of other Christian leaders and we were struggling to get through our agenda. And I said to them, you know what? We are not the only person with an agenda in this room. There's an enemy and he has an agenda and it's to destroy the things that God's doing. And the truth of the matter is I know that verse in Ephesians six, it says, put on my armor of God. And I know that passage in first Peter that talks about the enemies like a lion roaring around wanting to destroy the problem sometimes when we sew those teachings together is it's like, I'm supposed to put my armor on and wait for the lion to come get me. Well, he just does the same thing over and over again. And why does he get to go first? I, if I know what he's going to do, <laughs> I want to throw the first punch. I want to be spiritually on the offense, spiritually aggressive. Um, we have more power. It says in Exodus, there's more power in the finger of God than there is in all the enemy power combined. And so just walking in that truth and I don't feel like I have to work very hard to convince your listeners that we're in a battle. Yes, we are. So when you talk about throwing the first punch, is it a matter of going out looking for trouble? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> I do think he does call us to go into dark places, but we have tools in our tool belt. And really what my heart was, was to, to let's identify what kind of tools we have. And then the book is a series of stories and teachings of moments when as a mom, as a wife, as a friend, as a ministry leader, as all the different hats I wear, when I could feel darkness, when I could sense the evil had an agenda. And it's really tempting to blame, as you mentioned, other people or to blame ourselves when things start falling apart. And this is just to give us eyes and tools to realize what we have in our hand that we can use to fight against a battle we can't always see. So what do you see as perhaps some of the principles that believers can apply when engaged in spiritual battle? Now, the battle will, I mean, the enemy, he yes. has come to steal, kill, and destroy. He roams about like a roaring lion. Yes. So we recognize that he's going to come. Yes. And even when he's not seemingly around. Yes. There are still these tools that are at our disposal on a constant basis. So how do we how do we use them and how do we know how to use them and when to use them? I think that's a great question. And some of the tools are tools that maybe we've all, we would already think about. Tools like the power of prayer, tools like um, the the application of scripture. To, you know, there are lots of tools, but there are also other tools that we talk about in the book. I think confession is one of our strongest weapons we have because unconfessed sin is a place the enemy can build a stronghold or a foothold. Um, I think, I think the in fellowship and building um, confessional communities where we make a determination with other people that we're serving alongside that we're going to live and walk in the light. There are so, and the other thing that I think is amazing is that one of the enemy's tactics is. He makes us seem like he and God are like these equal sized rivals. Like we have an angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other. And there's all kinds of caricatures and cartoons that depict spiritual mm. warfare as if these rivals are the same size. And part of what I try to do in the teaching is let's right size the enemy and right size God. And in within that reality, you, you, you naturally build some spiritual confidence that allows you the space to walk into things that might otherwise intimidate us. 